Dr. Lambert, Hannah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, my name's Hannah. Um, I'm a salaried GP in Bairstead, which is a small village in Maidstone in Kent. Um, I qualified as a GP just in August of this year, 2009. Um, and I have come back to my roots. I'm from Maidstone, which so it's really, really nice to live in this area again. Recently bought a house, getting married, lots going on, um, but really enjoying my job too. And have you always wanted to be a doctor? Um, that's a very interesting question. I think um, if somebody had planted the idea in my head a bit earlier, then probably the answer would be yes. But um, I, I, I kind of was, was good at science at school, as I think most doctors are, but um, nobody really pushed me in that direction. I never thought of it, don't have any doctors in the family or anything like that. So I actually took a slightly different path and did a biomedical science degree at Leeds University, first of all, which led me to an extremely dull laboratory job, which I managed to do for a year. And then I just thought, well, I actually need to talk to people a bit more than this. And how can I use my skills in a bit more of a, you know, sociable and communicative way? Um, and I think it was around that point, really, that somebody suggested, you know, oh, you'd make a good doctor or something along those lines. And um, so I embarked upon my medical career from there. Our website is there to offer advice to people making decisions about their medical career and about choosing the career that's best for them. So why did you choose general practice? Um, I think the very special thing about general practice is that you, you get to practice lots of different skills and a variety of specialties all in one. Um, so if, if people are anything like me, they'll find that as they go through their early medical training, they go to paediatrics and they think, oh, I really like paediatrics. And then they'll go to obs and gynae and think, oh, I really like that. And actually, you know, to make a career choice where you get to experience all of those things on a, you know, let's face it, a daily basis, um, I, think, I think that's very special and unique to the specialty. Um, so I think it was that variety that specifically attracted me. Um, and also the, the kind of camaraderie, the team working that you, that you come across within a, a general practice setting. I mean, it's fabulous and you've got lots of flexibility and things like that uh, also to tempt you. So it's, it's a wonderful career. A lot of people study through the, our website at the, the statistics and the workforce statistics. Did you have a look at those yourself? Um, I'm, I'm sure I did at the time. I think, I think the overwhelming thing from a personal point of view was that I knew 100% that I wanted to be a general practitioner. So I don't think statistics would have dissuaded me one way or another. Um, I think the one thing I, I would say is that it's very evident to me that um, primary care is becoming bigger by the, by the second and lots of secondary care services are coming into primary care. So we now have lots of, for example, GPs with special interests in dermatology, orthopaedics, whatever it is. Um, and so, you know, there are going to be more and more jobs available in general practice. Um, and I think, you know, statistics to one side, that's the overwhelming feeling that I have. And I'm, I'm glad about it, for one. Your enthusiasm is infectious. But what is it specially about workers in general practice that you enjoy? Um, I think it's really nice to get up in the morning, coming to your job and really not have a clue what's about to walk through the door. It's challenging but it's, you know, it's unique again to the specialty. You can have a two year old sitting in, in the chair one minute and literally five minutes later have an 102 year old with completely different sets of problems. Um, and I think that, that that is part of the challenge of general practice and it makes it very enjoyable. Every single day is different. Um, the other great thing about it is the continuity of care that you're able to give to your patients. I mean, I've worked in lots of different medical jobs and things where you kind of clock someone in and then you never see that patient again. You have no idea what happened to them, what the outcome was. In general practice, they're your patient, okay, so you have that luxury, not only of looking after them through their life, but looking after their family as well, and understanding kind of how things impact on them. But it's not all good, is it? There must be some, some aspects of this job that, that aren't so good. 
I think so. I think there are with every job. I think the biggest thing that, if you ask the majority of GPs, the thing that gets them down is paperwork. Um, these days, it's all about pro formas and you know, and uh, dictation and referrals, and there are, there is a lot of that, but. I think you, you need to balance it out, and provided you're organised, you can strike quite a good balance. Um, so I think that's what most general practitioners would say. I personally would say that the thing that I don't like about it is encountering vicious dogs on home visits because I'm really not a fan of them, and it's the one thing in general practice that um, just puts the living day <laughs> scares the living daylights out of me. But I've learned to cope with it, so that's good. Is there such a thing as a typical day? What's a typical day like? Well, obviously every day varies, but there is, there's a basic structure to the day. Um, and we tend to start at about 8.30. One of the great things about general practice, in this practice anyway, is that we all meet at 8.30 in the coffee room upstairs. We have a big doctor's area. And we will all sit for half an hour and sign prescriptions together. Now, it sounds very dull, but we have a lot of banter. We've started up a fat club, so we weigh each other every Friday. You know, and there's lots of opportunity there to really interact with your colleagues and talk about difficult cases if you need to as well. We'll then do a morning surgery, 10 minutes a patient. As I've said before, you never know what's coming through your door. Then there's an opportunity to go out on home visits, which are extremely varied and very interesting. I mean, not many jobs where you get to go into people's homes and actually see them in that context. Um, then there's a bit of paperwork, of course. And then you do an afternoon surgery, um, you know, again, 10 minutes per patient, and then you're, you're off by six. So... It's a full day, but it's very varied, challenging, and um, every day is different. Yeah, and you've talked about the growth in primary care. Mm. Um, so what can people do to maximise their chances of working in general practice if that's what they're choosing to do? Um, I think that the, the main thing is to actually have an enthusiasm for general practice, and I think that can only be gleaned from experiencing it. Um, I know that most foundation programmes now are starting to incorporate general practice placements, which I think is brilliant, and I would really encourage any candidate to just approach it with an open mind and, and see how they like it. Um, if they decide it's for them, then I think they need to be confident about their decision, be enthusiastic about their decision, you know, just let their natural personality shine through an interview or selection. Um, and really selection is looking at your communication skills and abilities, you know, knowledge you can find in a book, but communication skills are, are very important. And who would you say would make the best candidate? Um, I think somebody that loves the job and somebody that can, can demonstrate that they love the job. Um, a team player, it's essential to be able to communicate with every single member of the team in both primary and secondary care. Um, in order to do the best for your patients um, and you do need to be organised you know it's a much more autonomous way of working than in hospital um, so you do need to have a degree of kind of organisation and understand what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. If you had your time again would you make the same decision? Oh yes 100 times over definitely. Smashing, thank you.